Let's make an API endpoint. We don't really need to do this, we already have a working contact form after all, but this is a good exercise for understanding XHR. It'll be good times for everyone. Let's get started. Oh, obviously given that this is part 4, you should have done parts 1, 2, and 3 already, otherwise you're going to be lacking the scaffolding necessary to proceed. Make sure you've done those, and then this will make a lot more sense. Add a new file to slash routes called api.js. Inside of it, start with this code, which is the same as all the rest of our routes. Before we go further, let's make sure Express knows about this route by adding it to app.js. So open that file real quick, and adjust your route requires to look like this. And then your router app.use declarations, right here, to look like this. That's all we need there, so save the file and switch back to routes slash api.js. We're going to catch a post to slash api slash contact, which we'll use to make the XHR request. No need for any gets in this router, we're not serving pages from it. Here's the code. This is a big bunch of stuff, but it's nearly identical to the two post catches we already have in the contact router. Because it's nearly identical, I'm going to paste it instead of typing it all out, especially because it has that big regular expression in the middle of it again. I'll scroll through it afterwards so you can check it out. So here we go. Do you see the differences? We've made a slight change to our errors object for expediency. And then we're sending the results as JSON if there are any issues to report. We're also returning a success message as JSON if everything works out. Save this file, because we're done here. Time to head for the front end. First, let's add the ability for our contact form to display error and success messages. Open up slash views slash contact .ejs, and below the h1 tag, but above the form tag, add this code. Okay, save that file and open slash public slash style sheets slash style.css. It's time for another big blob of minified CSS. Here's the code, which I recommend grabbing from the article. Just paste it in like this. Fabulous. Save that file, and head to slash public slash javascript slash site.js. This is where the rubber hits the road. Pristine's already catching our button click, so we don't have to write code for that. We just have to change this line to this. Of course, we haven't written the submit form function yet, so let's do that. At the very bottom of the file, below the brace that closes the DOM content loaded event listener, add this code. This is a huge chunk of code compared to most of what I do in these tutorials. Sorry, I've commented to make it clear what's happening. Also, the odds that I type all of this right the first time with no errors are pretty slim. Let's go. Alright, still with me? That's getting all our DOM elements and getting data together. Now we're going to make the XHR request.
All right, I think that is the longest block of uninterrupted typing I have ever done in one of these tutorials. Uh, again, I apologize for the length, but sometimes these things are complicated. We're going to do a bunch of testing to make sure that this code actually all works. In fact, I'm going to do that in the background right now. Now, ah, you know what? We'll do it live. Save this file and we're done. Now we're going to head for localhost port 3000 slash contact. Again, restart your server if you're not using Nodemon or it's not on or any of that good stuff. I think you guys have figured this out by now. Make sure you refresh the page to get the new client side JS and CSS styles. Obviously, I probably didn't need to do that because I just went there, but better safe than sorry. Then fill in your form with whatever you want. And hit submit. Nothing happened. I bet we've got a console error. Sure do. Site.js line 28. Aha. Save. Refresh. Refill. Submit. Hey, all right, a success message. Cool. Want to quickly check the error message? Just head to slash route slash api.js and change this line from not email to yes email. In fact, let's change all of these because why not? Save that. Refresh. And I bet we're going to get a whole bunch of errors here. Or not. Let's figure out what's happening real quick. Still rendering a success response. That's unexpected. Ah, uh, here's the issue. Of course, it's not going to equal zero. I changed that without thinking about it. What I was actually trying to change was the regular expression test. Take that out. Save this. Refresh. Aha, we have a typo. So this is still not working properly, but at least we're getting closer. Error text is not usually spelled with a P. Sure, you guys saw that as I was typing it. We're like, no. All right. Refresh again. There we go. We have a bunch of errors. They are, of course, fake errors because we actually did submit everything, but our front end validation would not allow us to submit malformed or missing data. By the way, make sure you fix API.js when you're done so that it actually works properly again. All right, that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to wire up an actual SMTP service. It's pretty easy, but you'll have to sign up for a free website. I'll talk you through the whole thing. See you there.